Hi guys, it's France week 84 of the Journal on Monday series and you've all voted very clearly for the encaustic medium for this week, so that's what I will be playing with. Um, I didn't have any clay board anymore at home, so I just used what I had laying around. This is the back cover of a block of paper, watercolor paper, and it's pretty thick. I, I think it's it's um, almost four millimeter um, cardboard. So I added a layer of gesso on top of it to protect it, and now I'm getting some plaster strips ready because I want to add some texture underneath um, the encaustic. So just laying them to dry, and once they are completely dried, I can glue them on top of my also dried piece of cardboard. Before doing so, I'm distressing the edges again that I have been cutting because I don't want them to be too neat. Going over it with my heat gun to make sure everything is completely dried. I don't want any water being captured between uh, my layers. Um, and while I'm gluing this, I want my encaustic medium to melt. And this is encaustic medium that I've been uh, mixing up here at home. And encaustic medium is wax, beeswax, mixed with the mar resin. Um, as you can see, I, I just use my melting pot, so I haven't really bought anything specially for um, working with encaustic so far. I'm planning on investing in it, um, little by little, <laughs> but for the moment I'm just using whatever it is I have. Uh, gluing down the plaster strips with my glue gun. And meanwhile, the um, encaustic medium is just melting. I'm being very careful because the um, melting pot is quite small, so I have to take care I don't have too much medium in it while it's uh, melting. And I'm also remelting my brush because the only thing you can do when you're done with your brush is leaving leaving it to um, cool, so it will keep it its wax or medium or whatever is on it. And the next time you want to use it, you just melt it again um, in the in the medium. And now I can start applying my first layer, but I forgot to heat my surface, and I felt it immediately as the wax wouldn't uh, spread, well the medium wouldn't spread on top of the surface. So now that it's heated, I can add a first layer of um, encaustic medium. And now that this first layer is on my surface, I have to fuse it so that it sticks to the surface. Um, as I'm working on a piece of cardboard, I'm not using my bigger uh, heat gun to do this. I'm just using my regular scrapbooking um, heat gun. And to fuse it, you just heat up the top surface of um, the medium. I also turn my piece over and over again so that each uh, layer is added in a different direction. Otherwise, I would end up with one big blob of uh, encaustic medium on one side and a very thin layer on the other side. Now, this is only the fourth time that I'm playing with my encaustic medium. I'm absolutely aware that this piece is full of flaws and mistakes and everything, but I'm playing and I'm having fun and I think that's the most important part, part of it. Um, this is oil pastel that I'm using to add a shade on the edges and I'm mixing several colors and I'm just just blending it um, using my finger. And again, once this is done, I'm fusing the color 
in the medium that's underneath. And then going back in with the encaustic mediums, medium, I'm adding several layers of it. And then again, fusing the layers together. I want to add a darker shade around it, so I'm using pen pastels um, this time. And before I did so, I had to wait for um, the layers to cool down completely. And then just using a um, paper towel, I'm taking the excess pen pastel away. This will also add a distressed look to it. Then going back in with the oil pastel, I'm accentuating the texture on one side of my piece. And as I rub it with my finger, I'm actually forcing um, the color inside all the little creases and holes that I have so far. As I don't want it to stay this blue, not yet, I'm using a linseed oil to clean up um, the wax. I only want some of the blue to remain in the, in the creases. But I'm not taking everything away either. I'm going for something in between. And then again, fusing all the layers together. Now, I want to change color in my melting pot, so I have to empty it. That's the thing when you work with what you have. So I'm emptying my encaustic medium in something that I stole from my own kitchen <laughs> and that I will from now on will uh, be using for my um, encaustics. So cleaning my melting pot and then I'm going in with encaustic paint, which is one of the toys that I got myself in New York. And now that I had a chance to play with it, I totally regret that I didn't take uh, more of it. I only took three colors and, well, I have to go back to New York and get some more. So encaustic paint is encaustic medium with a color to it. And when I started applying it, um, I was amazed by um, the color intensity of it. So. I will be using this uh, more in the future. And then again, fusing the layers together. Turning the piece around and then doing the same in the other direction. And I do like the fact that it's not um, totally smooth. The holy grail in encaustic is going for a smooth surface. Uh, I'm not anywhere near that yet. <laughs> um, so I play with this um, irregularity in the layer. And then again, taking the um, excess encaustic paint um, in a container so that I can keep it for later and cleaning my melting pot so that I can go back in with just uh, encaustic medium that, it's, that is not colorized. So after giving it some time to cool down, I'm remaking my edge. I didn't expect this encaustic paint to have that much um, coverance. Is that how you say it? That it would cover completely what's, what was on the needle. And then adding some more pen pastel. Using everything together again. And then adding some more encaustic medium, just like I did before starting to play with color. And as you can see, my um, pen pastel started to move around. I should have started on the other 
uh, side if I didn't want this, but it's okay. Learning. Learning by mistake. To add some markings in the wax, I'm going in with a compass, but I replaced... This is normally a compass to cut paper with. So I replaced the blade with a toothpick. And this is when I realized that the white wax uh, needed much more uh, cooling time than the encaustic medium. Because as you can see, the marking is, is um, deeper than in the regular encaustic medium. And then again, using oil pastel, I'm filling the ridges with color to accentuate the circles. And then again, I'm cleaning the excess with linseed oil. And then fusing it. I decided to add uh, one more layer of encaustic medium. And then to redo um, the edge in a cleaner way. And again, fusing everything together. The plan for me in the beginning was to add a rusted uh, washer in the center and it's, pretty, it's a pretty heavy washer so I'm melting the beeswax in the middle and I'm gluing my washer in the melted beeswax. And before everything gets too hard, it's in between still quite soft and um, getting harder, I'm cleaning the edges of my cardboard. This will give a neat look to the finished piece. And normally when I work with wax, I work on um, wax paper, which is normally used for food, but I didn't think about it when I started my um, video, so I kept it on my craft sheet. Um, if you want to clean your craft sheet, just melt the wax using your heat gun and then wipe it before it, it gets hard again. And now that my edges are clean, I can add a pen pastel on top of the gesso again. and then rubbing the excess away because I don't want my fingers to be <laughs> totally brown with the pen pastel. I am marking the wax using an embossing tip. Um, this has a metallic point to it which is pretty round and pretty soft and that's what I'm using to make little holes in uh, the wax and then again using pen pastel I'm going to fill this 
Oh, no, using oil pastel, sorry, I'm filling these holes with um, color. <clears throat> so I'm rubbing um, the, the pastel with my finger to force it inside the hole to make sure that the complete hole is filled with color. And then again, using linseed oil, I'm cleaning up um, the excess color. Using this um, second washer, which is exactly the same, I'm measuring the inside hole of the washer that I used on my piece so that I can make a little metallic embellishment. And I'm just twisting some wire together to embellish it. And in the center of the um, uh, washer, I want to add a little cold porcelain heart. And I'm using glossy accents this time to glue everything in place as I want to fill the whole of the washer um, with glossy accents as well. And then using the same, I'm um, gluing down that little twisted piece of wire. And that what what took so that is what took so so much time to dry yesterday evening. And every time I lifted the piece, of course, everything would start moving. So I had to wait for it complete to dry completely before I could um, move my piece around. I thought my camera was rolling, but it was not. I used um, sharp point to carve some lines using a ruler uh, in the wax, just like I did uh, for the holes with the, um, the, the embossing tip. And then again, filling it with um, oil pastel, rubbing it in with my finger, and now using oil seed, I'm, I'm taking the excess color away.
I also wanted to add some very soft um, text on my piece, so I'm um, adding a bit of embossing ink on my stamp and then <clears throat> putting some pen pastel on top of it. But it took me quite some effort to get my stamping straight and as you can see, every time I don't like it, I just rub it away and I start over again. And then adding some more pen pastel, I move around and stamp just a bit everywhere where I want to have some stamping. Doing this with pen pastel adds a really very soft um, stamping to the piece. And then I'm taking the excess pen pastel away because I don't want it to move around afterwards if I touch it with my finger. And I'm very slightly dabbing, I'm not rubbing, I'm really dabbing to pick up the excess pen pastel. Also, I did fuse it one last time um, in the end, and there again my camera wasn't, wasn't rolling. Finishing up the edges again. And as usual, you can find the complete list of products that I used on my blog. See you there, and see you back next time. Ta-da!